Oh yeah, you okay? So this is the second vid um, for the first lesson of differentiation. Um, just going to pause it for a second. There you go, sorry about that. Right, so we're differentiating the sine of the cos. Now we are actually going to use first principles to do this, but that's pretty full on. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the gradient. And you can actually graph the gradient function on your uh, calculator. And you can see but it has to be done in gradients. Um, right, so let's have a look. You can't really tell from here. Oh, that's your y-axis, I think. There, and that's a pi. Right, so let's think about gradients here. Now the gradient is either going to be 0, 1, or minus 1. That's the key points where I'm looking at. So if I look at 0, the gradient is 1. So I'm going to put a point there. If I look at pi by 2, the gradient is 0. If I look at pi, the gradient is 1. If I look at 3 pi over 2, the gradient is 0. If I look at 2 pi, the gradient is 1. Now, following the curve round and how it changes gives me, I think it's the wrong colour, I think it's a different colour. I got like, change colour so it stands out. Um, different green. So if I follow that through, if you look, I started off with the sine graph, but I've actually got the cos graph out. So if I start off with sine x and differentiate it, I get the cos graph out. I'm just moving down a little bit, um, similar vein to what we said before. I differentiate that bracket and stick it at the front. So they've got k cos kx. So I'm going to go one step further and say if it's a function, so it could be like an e to the x. Then when I differentiate it, I have to differentiate that function as well. And this, like I said before, this is actually something called the chain rule, which we're going to do properly uh, in the next lesson. I'm sorry. Right, back to this other one. So, so hopefully you can see the y-axis there for the... Uh, no, it's not. Let's move it there. Come on. It's the cos graph, isn't it? So I'm starting off with the cos graph. So looking at the gradient, the gradient is zero for starting. It's minus one at pi by two. Oh, yeah, minus one at pi by two. It's zero at pi. It's one at three pi over two. Is um, one there is zero at two pi. So, yeah, there seems to be additional lines in there looking about. So then if I graph this one, if you look what I've got, I've kind of got the sine graph, but it's upside down. So what I've actually got is minus sine graph. So if I differentiate the cos graph, it goes to the minus sine x graph. So in a similar vein with the kx bit, which is one of the brackets in the right place. There. So if I differentiate cos of kx, I get minus k sine of kx. So in general, if I had the cos of a function, when I differentiate it, goes to minus f dash of x, differentiating that function, sine of the function there. Right, so let's have a look at these. So these you definitely better get ahead. Now what I do is I'm a little bit sneaky, I do a clock face. So I start with sine, and then if I differentiate sine, it goes to cos. If I differentiate cos, it goes to minus sine. Now sine went to cos, so minus sine would go to minus cos. And if you look, the jump from cos to sine changes sine, so that's high. So if I go that way, I differentiate. Now what's quite nice, and this is something I definitely not going to get to it here, but it means if I reverse it, if I go the other way around, I can integrate. So that clock face, which I'm convinced I invented myself, which probably I didn't, and somebody, somebody showed me about 20 odd years ago, is a nice way of remembering it. So I always draw the clock face whenever I differentiate or integrate the trick function. Right, so that's what I'm going to say. So dy by dx is, so differentiate the two x's of two, sine goes to cos if you look at the clock face. 
Now, what people forget is that stays there. That must stay. That's the second function. And there's one for you to have a go at. So minus sine x, if you follow the clock face, goes to minus cos x. And then I've got to differentiate the 7x, and I should have a minus 7 cos of 7x. But I've got minus cos now. So looking at my clock face, minus cos on my clock face goes to plus sine. So f dash to x instead of f of x. So minus cos on my clock face, if you follow it round clockwise, goes to plus sine. Then I've got to differentiate the 5x, that's a 5, and then it'll be sine of 5x there. So cos on here plus cos goes to minus sine, so there should be a minus 4 sine 4x there. Put brackets around that one, there's no confusion. <clears throat> this next one does a bit of both. So let's have a look. So we've got a, I've got a plus cos bit. There's my little clock face going up there. So dy by the x. So I've got 2. So 2 is just a scaling factor. Plus, so I've got a cos 4x. So cos goes to minus sine. So that's going to be 2 to be minus 4 sine of 4x. So if I tidy that up straight away, that would be minus 8 sine of 4x. And then I've got minus sine. So minus sine goes to minus cos. So I've got minus 5 times 3 cos 3x. Depends where you put that minus, really. So I've got minus 15 cos of 3x. But the minus sign, if you follow the clock face around, goes as minus cos. I mean, we could see it as minus 5 times by a plus sign. When the plus sign goes to the plus cos, you still get a minus in there, so it all works out fine. So let's have a look at this one now. So I'd say, before I open this, the 3 sine 2x becomes a 6 cos 2x, and the 2 cos 5x becomes a minus 10 sine 5x. If it works. There you go. Please, so there's no confusion, put brackets around them all the time. All right, we're getting towards seven minutes. I'll finish that page off. There's one more page for this lesson, but I'm running out of time, so I've got to pass this one to you tomorrow. So I'll probably record that later. Okay, see you later. Bye bye.